we visited the home office of Wilmer Amina Carter and husband Ratibu Jaycox, who have taken on the challenge of preserving the legacy of the African-American contribution to the development of the Inland Empire. In any historical book you read about the Inland Empire, if, if you're going to be talking about African-Americans, it starts when the Mormons came here in the late 1800s. Most of those African-Americans flourished. Some were here four or five years before they realized California was a free state, and some of them had to go to court to obtain their freedom. In spite of all of that, they survived and they prospered in San Bernardino. So it just reminded me of where I came from. I came from the rural south of Mississippi, and I grew up in a communal society. The Africans there were storytellers. And so as a child, I would sit on the doorstep and listen to all the history of my ancestors. And from an early age, I used to write down those stories. And I have records. Uh, my, fa my father from, 15, from 1915 to 2015, that's a hundred years. In the meantime, Amina was doing it with her family long before we met. But then as we got involved in community activities, we started saving information from the community. We have this great Inland Empire that was an all-American city in 1977 and I grew up here. So I said, what did the African Americans do to help create this beautiful, beautiful area? And so I started to read about the history of the Inland Empire, and I found very little. The lack of information is attributed to a failure to archive. We didn't do it. My father, mother, they may not even have known how, and, but later on we could have done it, but we didn't do it. Some people don't see how important it is. That's another reason. And then people who own the press, they write their own stories and they frame it to, sit, to suit their own uh, image and interest. So I decided that I would go to people who knew how to archive, have them teach me how to do that, how to do the research, and then talk about the contributions of the African Americans here in the Inland Empire and it's just been such an amazing project. I have stories you would not believe of success, of, of overcoming, of uh, contributions, and I'm so excited to be able to talk about those stories. And they're glorious stories. I know a lot of times people think it's depressing, and there are some depressing stories, but there are also stories of overcoming, getting an education, coming out here from the South, and it doesn't matter whether they were the primary player in development or played a lesser role. The story is still uh, worth telling, and it gets you excited when you see it. For example, there was one guy I interviewed, his name is Harris. He moved here from Louisiana, could not read or write, and became a contractor and knew how to read blueprints and build houses from the ground. And he started asking people things, and they told him, and he could remember it. I mean, his memory is outstanding. And so he developed, raised his family, and became a preacher and an important person in the community. But he may not be known outside of this, his family and church group. But this story should be told to everybody. To prevent unrecognized contributing members of the community from falling through the cracks, the couple set on a special quest. That search was so wonderful. First of all, we went to the local library in San Bernardino, and there were eight books complete with blacks uh, back in the early 1900s that uh, were on the society pages, the early schools, but there were no names for them. And so I know that they did things, but there were no names, so we decided to do an event with the local library and invite the community out to see if they could help us identify those people by name and what their occupations were and uh, tell us what did they do. It was so exciting and that's what created the interest in our project uh, by the people in the community. Not just African American people, but all the people in the community are very interested, especially librarians. 
And because we have found these wonderful stories, we would like to archive them for the next generation so that they don't think that they are now having to recreate history. They can copy history and improve it. It's a very expensive project, but it's one that we need to do. Their goal is to leave a legacy, and they lead by example. I look at the past and honor it. I engage the present and make it better. I imagine the future and forge it.